Hello boys and girls, my name is Michael SK and welcome back to the Labyrinth of Grisaya. So in the last episode, there was a bomb defusal of a fake bomb, which I guess was to be a little bit expected. But then the actual toy bomber called Yuji and told him, yeah, that was a prank. But the one that's in the vent is not a prank. So, how the fuck is... <laughs> Basically, the situation is how the fuck is he going to climb into the vent and defuse that shit? That's, that's basically the scenario. They have 30 minutes. They can't evacuate everyone. That's, that's not an option, or he will just manually blow the bomb up. So, obviously, a crazy scenario. This is the conflict that I expected. That is basically the... That, that's the summarization. Really don't know why I, I just didn't bring it to this slide or this scene here. It would have made a little bit more sense. Yeah. What's more, it's inside this building. He said it was in the ventilation duct that begins in the room we're standing in. Yeah, how did they miss that shit? A number of possible reasons come to mind, but he informed me of its specific location and that it's designed to be diffusible. I don't think he's bluffing. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he drove the thing in there using some kind of modified RC vehicle. It's a relatively popular guerrilla warfare tactic. <clears throat> if what he said was true, we have 30 minutes left. <laughs> Murmuring to herself, JB glances down at her watch, then retrieves a handheld PC from her pocket and begins to tap at its keyboard. <laughs> ここに到着するまでに少なくとも20分はかかるわ。それからダクトの中にロボットアームを伸ばして作業するとなると、とても plus, wouldn't the toy bomber manually blow the bomb up if he saw the bomb squad coming back? I mean, he didn't say that he would, but wouldn't he? だとすれば、会場を諦めて会場内の人間を避難させるしか。No, no, 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 no. That's not an option either. He threatened to detonate the bomb the moment we tried to escape the building. We're pretty much out of luck. I might be capable of defusing the bomb, but there's no way I'll fit inside that duct. That said, if we try to make a run for it, we'll get an immediate game over. The threat's clear and unambiguous. But all we can do is wait for death, painfully aware of our helplessness. Rather than just killing us, forcing us into this impossible situation was probably the bomber's primary objective. In that case, there's only one option left. Yuji, you're really... I'm trying to drink water like in between all these things. God damn. Alright. As I reach my conclusion, I find myself remembering what someone once told me about X... XOs? who never managed to command their own submarine. When circumstances force you to weigh two things against each other, a captain has to be capable of making a calm, rational decision. That's the nature of the test in front of me, and I'll answer it without hesitation. Can you do this, Sachi? Yes. Oh, I saw that coming. Wait a minute! Are you really going to take the bomb to Sachi? You're aware that I've been training her in the handling of explosives, right? I'm well aware of the risks, but if we just sit here and wait, the odds of everyone in this building getting out alive are low. The only way to avoid that outcome is to have Sachi crawl into that duct and attempt to defuse the bomb. Yeah, 
Tachi wa anata no kekkou aite na no yo. The fact that you'd even bring that up tells me you're not thinking straight, JB. You're an officer who's been forced to make snap life or death decisions countless times. This idea probably occurred to you before I even brought it up, right? So, so wa... I'm not going to send her on a suicide mission. Sachi can do this. I wouldn't have proposed this plan if I thought otherwise. Yes. <laughs> Because at the end of the day, they're still teenagers. This is the conclusion we've reached. I'm not saying you have to approve. Just accept that it's our best option at the moment. Nodding decisively, JB once again begins to type away on her pocket PC. I expect she's contacting Ichigaya to inform them of our current situation and plan. Thanks, Julia. Even by the standards of Ichigaya and Akasaka, JB's a remarkably talented and intelligent officer. She must have thought out this or thought of this plan right away. The fact that she didn't suggest it herself proves how much she cares about us. Yuka. Right. Sachi face Sachi's face, <laughs> my bad, is filled with determination. For a moment, I stare quietly into her eyes. Listen up, Sachi. I'm a useless bum who's sending his own bride off to deal with a time bomb. So you damn well better complete your mission and come back safe. If only to give me a piece of your mind. Yeah, it's not to save everyone. <laughs> it's only for that. That works too. It's a promise. After nodding firmly in answer to my words, Sachi begins to cut the hem of her dress with a pair of antique scissors that were lying on a nearby table. これならそれなりに動ける。いい、サチ。もし自分には無理だと判断したらすぐに引き返すのよ。申し訳ありませんが、そのお約束はできません。分かったわ。あなたにそれだけの覚悟があるのなら、もう何も言わない。with this, JB puts a hand to Sachi's cheek and kisses her gently on the forehead. Damn, dude! JB never did that for us. It wasn't exactly a pep talk. But we've said that... What? Fuck. But we've said what needed to be said. The three of us proceed to push all of the room's furniture together. Once our makeshift staircase is completed, Sachi clam clambers... What am I reading anymore? Carefully up it and opens the ventilation duct's cover. Jesus Christ. What am I even saying? How does it look? Think you can squeeze in there? Sounds lit. Alright then. The rest is up to you, Sachi. Sachi replies to me without turning back, then slides herself carefully into the duct. I watch until she's disappeared from view, then sits down heavily on the floor. Yeah. There's no reason for you to put yourself down. The company needs a brain that makes rational decisions. It's what allows the limbs to put their lives on the line. Besides, I'm the one who should be dwelling on my uselessness. This guy picked a fight with me, and I'm sending off my woman to stand in my place. Doesn't get much worse than that. Yes? Telekinesis, please. 
Asako might have been able to figure out some way to deal with this on her own. Probably. Honestly, it's such a pain dealing with someone who knows you. Still, like I said before, I didn't send Sachi because she's our only option. It's because I trust her. Our training was unofficial, so I couldn't exactly give her a badge, but I taught her basically everything I know about explosives and how to handle them. And when you add Sachi's problem-solving skills and determination to the mix, even a fairly complex bomb shouldn't be too much for her to handle. Yeah, I guess so. In the beginning, I wasn't sure I should take it that far, but once we actually talked it out, I realized that's just our way of doing things. So, Yuji and Sachi I mean, I'd say so. Would you pick someone you don't trust to wipe your ass when you're a senile old coot? <laughs> you got that right, sister. Nice to hear. How about you? Remember what your job is yet? Before you go, I have a favor to ask. Right. If we're able to successfully defuse that bomb, I want to hold the wedding as planned. Of course. We'd have to capture that bastard who's doing this best to ruin it, but and ensure the building's completely safe first, but I'm pretty sure he's somewhere in this chapel right now, or at the very least, somewhere not too far. If that wasn't the case, he wouldn't have been able to place that phone call to my room with such impeccable timing. And given the way, or the many ways he could try to fool him, or that we could try to fool him, my bad, I doubt he'd have threatened to set off the bomb the moment we try to escape unless he was here to keep an eye on us. Yeah, one of my classmates happens to have the nose of a police dog, and another learned Kazumi-style super self-defense from the master himself. Oh boy. <laughs> Keep, okay, so we're, we're with Sachi. Keeping my body pressed flat against the cold sheet iron of the duct, I crawl my way slowly toward its depths. The entrance was tight enough that I wasn't completely sure even I could fit, but there's a bit more wiggle room on the inside. I should have enough space to defuse the bomb itself. Oh shit. I mean, that looks like a tight area. At least she's got a flashlight. Shaking my head, I banish a distracting thought that had briefly popped into my mind. Right now, I have to focus solely on what's right in front of me. Unless I defuse the bomb that's been planted at the back of this duct, my wedding will be the last of anyone's worries. My friends might lose their lives. I absolutely cannot allow that to happen. I don't know what sort of bomb awaits me, or whether its structure will allow me, or will even be familiar to me. In fact, I don't even know if the bomb was truly planted here. It's impossible not to be anxious. Yukun tells me that pessimistic thoughts are merely proof that I'm properly evaluating potential risks, but I can't allow myself to be paralyzed by the weight of my fears. Yukun and Harudera-san left this task in my hands because they trust me. If they didn't believe me capable, I'm positive they would have looked for another solution until the very last possible moment. And so... I want very much to reward them for placing their faith in me. Yes. Yes. 
自分自身の意志で、私は今、この場所にいる。And that's a good thing. It shows progress. 守られるばかりじゃなく、ユウ君の役に立ちたいと考えているなら、自分にそれができることを証明してみせる必要がある。だから、I can't worry you can any more than I already have. I have to handle this on my own. As these words flash through my mind, I feel my heart thump loudly in my chest. Yukon has always been fighting the fear and uncertainty I'm experiencing now. That's why he doesn't go into detail about his job. That's why he keeps us away from it. If we knew the truth in full, we'd no doubt have been paralyzed by anxiety. It was a kindness on his part. Based on my childish assumptions, I decided that I understood Yukun's struggles. I put my own desire to help him first and didn't bother to truly consider his feelings. I was acting exactly like the selfish child I used to be. Ten minutes to go, huh? Oh shit. Things got a little, uh. The, the mood, like, totally shifted here. Alone in my room, which JB left some time ago, I mutter quietly to myself Ten minutes from now, everyone in this building might well be dead. Given the circumstances, I should probably be having my life flash before my eyes, or sentimentally reflecting on my regrets and such. But oddly enough, I'm almost completely calm. My faith in Sachi definitely has something to do with that. However, there's also some more solid ground for optimism. Specifically, the fact that the bomb wasn't discovered during the initial search is actually a very good sign. When you're looking for a bomb, standard procedure is to look for the sounds produced by electric signals such as, a clock or such as clock pulses. Given that the bomb in the ducts wasn't detected using those methods, it's reasonable to assume that it's an old fashioned number that doesn't use much in the way of electronic equipment. In other words, the bombers claim that it's possible to diffuse as long as you follow the, pro the proper procedure seems more credible than it otherwise might. Still, those searches aren't always accurate. What if they just didn't find it and it's actually too complicated for Sachi to handle? What if he set up another bomb apart from the one in the duct? No matter how I try to avoid thinking about the worst case scenarios, they flash through my mind one after another. Gah! Damn it! There's no point racking my brains around this now. No matter how many times I sigh, it's not going to make Sachi's job any easier. Just assume she's going to succeed. Think about her returning triumphant. Once you've pulled the trigger, all you can do is pray. This isn't any different. Of course. Now I get it. I do trust her. But regardless, I just can't help worrying myself sick about her. This has to be exactly how Sachi feels. Waiting for me to return after JB's called me out into the field. I never really discussed the details with her. But she must be worried sick anyway. Now that I think about it, no matter how much Sachi insists, I wasn't worried in the slightest. She always seems to be waiting for me outside the school gates. And now I understand why. It's the coping mechanism of a stubborn honor student. Right. That's just the way you are. I'm probably a failure as a boyfriend for taking so long to remember that, but at least I finally managed to catch on. Up until now, I've really just been accepting Sachi's demands, and that's not the same as actually understanding her feelings. Now that I can see the difference, it's made things a lot clearer for me. There's something I really need to say to you, so make sure you get back here in one piece, Sachi. <laughs> The instant I speak that name, a sudden blow knocks the air from my lungs. What is this? Was I just attacked? I underestimated him. Didn't think he'd use the bomb as a distraction and come after me directly. Shamed by my carelessness and furious at my enemy, I managed to pull myself together, but 
as I opened my eyes. Knew it. With dust on her nose and a smile on her face, Sachi appears before me. Sachi. Yeah, right on cue, huh? Well, I spoke your name, but why are you here? No, wait. If you're back here, what happened to the bomb? Our time's almost... Sachi holds out an object she was carrying against her chest for my inspection. In a surprisingly calm tone of voice, Sachi concisely communicates the most crucial facts and nothing more. Why are you smiling then? You don't seem particularly panicked, considering. <laughs> She's putting a lot of faith into Yuji. We've got a bomb that can't be defused and a countdown that won't be stopped. Ten out of ten people would probably call this situation totally hopeless. But Sachi's gaze is clear and steady. In the depths of her eyes, there's a strength of will that's clearly different from anything I've seen in her before. Yeah, I'll take it from here. After patting Sachi's head to brush the dust from her hair, I grab the bomb and set off a at a dead run. As I slam open the door and burst out of the dressing room, I immediately spot a startled, startled male employee. That sounded like a woman standing nearby. Where's the kitchen? Make it quick, please. Given the capacity of this venue, there's gotta be a kitchen where they store food for the receptions, right? Thanks for your help. Can't you tell it's a bomb? Damn, dude. As the blood drains, drains bleh, from the man's face, I set off running once again. Right, this is fine. From the start, our feelings were in conflict. By trying to make things easier on Sachi, I just left her fearful and frustrated. On the other hand, by trying to be more useful, Sachi ended up making me the anxious one. And the only thing that can keep this teetering scale in the balance is our absolute trust in each other. If you're willing to believe in me, then I'll do everything I can to repay that trust. Of course, the fact that we've found our answer doesn't mean the countdown's going to stop. Even now, the bomb's primitive digital display is ticking steadily down toward the time limit. Under these circumstances, there's only one thing I can do. Limit the damage from the inevitable explosion to bare minimum. Or to a bare minimum. Nothing more, nothing less. Here we go! The kitchen's exactly where the man said it would be. And when I burst inside, I immediately spot the object I was hoping to find. In order to be... Or in order to blunt the power of an explosion, you want to space... Or you want a space to contain the blast. And a way to cut off the oxygen necessary for combustion. There's only one thing in this entire building that fits the bill. A thick industrial refrigerator made from stainless steel. Throwing open the refrigerator's door, I place the bomb on its middle level. After tossing its ingredients at random to fill as much of the remaining open space as possible, I carefully ease the door shut again. Alright. Lastly, I lower myself to the kitchen floor, bracing my feet against the counter and back my and and my back against the fridge. Hopefully, my weight will be enough to keep the door from flying open. <sighs> now, I guess we just gotta cross our fingers and wait. This one's coming down to a nice, simple conclusion. If I can withstand the force of the blast, I win. If I can't, our charming friend on the phone wins. But even if there's more explosives in that thing that I'm expecting, the blast probably won't hurt Sachi or the guests in the lobby area. Works for me. As long as I can protect the people I care about, as long as I can protect Sachi, then... Fuck.
Just as my heart's filling with an indescribable sense of satisfaction, the ear-splitting roar of an explosion fills the air. In the same instant, I'm rocked by a blow that seems to hit every part of my body simultaneously. My senses desert me, and I can't tell if I'm still sitting on the floor. Or, yeah, if I'm still sitting on the floor, I'm not even sure if I'm alive or dead. Calm down. That thing wasn't big enough to blow away the entire building, no matter how powerful the explosives were. Repeating these words silently to myself, I drift back toward consciousness, and little by little, I regain awareness of my own body. My ears are full of a high, unpleasant ringing sound, and my back and neck are stinging with pain. I've probably suffered a number of burns. That's a minor problem, of course. If I'm feeling pain, my injuries aren't severe enough that I'm likely to die. <laughs> Oh, and we found a way. Right. I've still got something I need to do. I don't have time to be lazying around in here. Ugh! When I force my eyes open through an effort of will, they're immediately stung by the smoke that's drifting around the area. However, the kitchen itself doesn't seem to have changed dramatically. It's clear that the explosion was relatively small in scale. Guess... I won after all. As I listen to the sound of a fire dying out behind me, the words slip out of my mouth. I don't quite have the strength to stand up yet, but I should recover soon enough. Yuka! All of a sudden, Sachi rushes into the room, looking exactly as she did when I left her. Sachi, everything alright on your end? <laughs> Hell yeah, it blew up in there. Yeah, since we couldn't disable the timer, the only option was to minimize the damage the bomb could do. Hell yeah, it was reckless. Well, I got off with only a few burns in the end. Not too bad, right? Eh. Oh. Right. <laughs> Maybe. Possibly. Damn. I'm still a little out of it, aren't I? Yeah, that... That probably wasn't good. Honestly. Don't think I've ever seen Sachi quite this flustered, though. We took care of the bomb that lunatic planted. We succeeded! That's the only reason I'm looking at Sachi's face right now. Given that, I guess it would be natural to throw my arms around her joyfully. But honestly, I can't quite bring myself to wholeheartedly celebrate this outcome. Maybe it's because I ended up worrying Sachi in the end. Maybe it's because I'm still more than a little woozy. But at that moment, there's something that concerns me more than my own injuries or the bomber himself. I'm sorry, Sachi. I didn't spare a thought for your feelings. I'm talking about your wedding dress. You were so excited about wearing it too, but I ended up making you cut it apart like that. I really am sorry. What an interesting apology. You did good, Sachi. After wiping away her tears with my fingers, I reach up and pat her head gently. Hell yeah, dude! Or hell nah, dude! One of the two. Oh, 
Sure, you can't exactly call me the world's most sensitive man. Masachi spent a ton of time choosing that dress, and she went out of her way to keep it a surprise for today. I can understand how it must feel to see it ruined. While I was waiting for you to crawl back out of that duct, I realized just how much I've been worrying you all this time. Maybe that's why I can tell what you're thinking now. Troublesome? I kind of figured you'd be happy about it. Damn, dude. Yeah, I'd really prefer if you didn't. Yuji's too damn honest. This is just the way I am. You understand that by now, right? That a fact? In this moment, we're finally connected in the way two people who want to spend the rest of their lives together should be. There's no need to state the fact out loud. The smiles on our faces speak more eloquently than words. I think it's a little early to assume that. Not to repeat myself, but I really don't want to let some stupid lunatic ruin our wedding for us. Man, fuck the possibility. Well, I... Oh, shit. I wonder what's going on. We're gonna have to wait till next time. We really are out of time. So I think in the next episode, we'll wrap things up. Because, uh... I feel like the conflict is over. It's time to, uh... It's time to reach some sort of conclusion. So we'll see what happens next time. Maybe it'll be a long episode. Maybe next time won't be the last episode. Who knows? But regardless, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Leave a like if you did. Subscribe for more. And I'll see you guys next time.